So if you're someone that's currently looking for your first job as a security engineer, or you just got your first job as an entry level security engineer, there are going to be some common challenges that you're going to want to be aware of when you're first getting started in the industry. You're going to have to learn new technical skills, such as new programming languages or new technologies, or you're going to have to learn new processes that are tribal to that specific company. I think one of the most common challenges that you're going to face as a entry level security engineer is the interpersonal relationships that you're going to have to build with really intense intelligent and really skillful engineers. So if you're getting into security for the first time, let me just tell you some things that you can expect. You're going to be slotted into a team. That team's going to have a CISO or a security manager. That CISO or security manager is going to be in charge of building policy and overall governance for the entire security posture of that team and then the organization as a whole. And then you're going to, as a security engineer, be in charge of implementing technical solutions and working with other teams whether it's developers, front-end engineers, back-end engineers, DevOps engineers, but you're gonna be boots on the ground intermingling with other teams and giving recommendations for what you see as best practices in security. So you can see right off the bat that you're going to be interfacing with a lot of really intelligent people and you're gonna to have to bring that same skill set to them so that they can trust in the work and the recommendations that you're giving them. Now, this isn't to say that you need to go in there with an ego or have some sort of contest to see whose skills are better. But what I am saying is a lot of times it is really natural for security to be seen as the restrictor of the organization. You're going to come in and be enforcing policies that are a positive for the organization. But some developers may see them as things that are going to be slowing down their workflows and they may respond to you with a little bit of friction. Now, I think that friction is pretty natural as developers are trying to push out solutions, applications, and software as fast as they can to meet deadlines. And you as a security engineer are trying to worry about the overall security posture of your entire organization and do your job to the best of your ability. So interpersonal relationships in this concept are going to be very key because you're going to be interfacing with these developers, trying to slot in seamlessly to their workflows, and also building your own technical solutions so that you can help out the organization as a whole. Oftentimes, it's really easy for an organization to get disjointed by giving off high-level governance policy and then expecting engineers, specifically software engineers, to actually follow that policy without the governance policy really thinking about how this specific policy will affect software engineers and their workflows. A lot of times, CISOs will push out security policy that can affect the entire organization, and then there can be pushback from engineers, and that pushback sometimes can be ignored. And that's where that kind of friction can come in. But it's your job as a security engineer to go in and be as technical as you can so you can interface with software engineers and let them know that you are actually understanding you know, the plights that they may have. And then it's your job to go to your CISO or your security manager and bring those kinds of issues that the DevOps engineers or the software engineers may have with the current security policy so you can make it better for everyone involved. I'm not saying that the software engineers should win all the time and that they should be able to download anything they want or install anything they want or not follow any policies. I think that it's just the job of a good security engineer to have really good interpersonal relationships with both teams and try to find a common ground between both of them, right? Products need to be shipped. That's how the company is going to make money. But you also need to be cognizant of the security posture of those products and of the security posture of your organization as a whole because when a breach happens, that's when a company can really lose money. So you have to be in the middle of those two fields and really marry the two opposing forces. So if you go into that new company with the mindset that we just spoke about, one of your roles is going to be to essentially make the software engineers believe the things that you're saying, right? I know we wanna think about going into a company as everyone just is automatically gonna believe all the recommendations that you're putting out, but you have to understand that these people have been reading the code that they're pushing out for most likely a pretty long time. They're pretty baked into the code base that they're using, and they probably know a lot of the things that you're going to be telling them off the bat. So a lot of times it's really good to approach the you know first couple of days at your new company as just asking to be walked through some of the things that you're going to be in charge of securing. Whether you're gonna be in charge of securing a database, you really wanna get the insight of the database admins. If you're gonna be securing AWS infrastructure, you're gonna really want to get the insight of the cloud engineers or the DevOps engineers that have been working with the platform for a multitude of months. If you're gonna be working with a software application, you're really gonna to want to have someone walk you through the software, see how everything connects, what it's written in, before you try to slot in and offer recommendations for what you are going to be trying to secure or how you're gonna be trying to enhance the security posture of that specific technology. 
Now, once you've done all that, I think it's a really good idea to bring back your findings to your CISO or your security manager or your team lead, whatever is the most appropriate for your organization, so that you can formulate a plan and say, you know, I found these things. I think we can enhance our security posture here. Let me go learn about these technologies so that when I come to the table with the software engineers, I'm not wasting their time and I'm not trying to add useless recommendations to a code base that may not need them. I think oftentimes security engineers will come in and they'll know security best practices but they need to know the security best practices that are best for that organization or that specific application. Those things are not oftentimes one in one, right? Like you could have a security best practice that's just a general security best practice, but your organization may not need to use it because they're covering their security in another different way. So if you come in, you learn all the technologies that you're actually going to be working with, I think that that really gives you a lot of value that you can offer to software engineers and to DevOps engineers without really slowing down their workflow. Because that can often be seen as security causing a bit of friction, being a bit restrictive. And that's really not what we want to do as security engineers. We just want to do our job, which is help secure and help enhance our security posture, but also let the DevOps engineers and the software engineers and assist them in creating meaningful software and building good products that are gonna bring the company a lot of success. So if you're someone that's just got their first job as a security engineer, I think you can follow some of the tips that I laid out before and be aware of some of the common challenges that you're gonna face going into an organization. I realized that the example I gave may be a bit generic to some companies and it might not be applicable to other companies, but I think if you really hone your skills and become highly technical and also really work on those interpersonal relationships with other teams and really try to see all sides of the organization, there's nothing stopping you from being a super successful security engineer and being well-liked within your organization and your peers in general. <laughs>